Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Today we will study one of the concepts given by M. N. Srinivas and the concept is Sanskritization. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to understand what is Sanskritization, where did it come from, its concept, analysis, criticism and we will also discuss some questions. I just want to say one thing before you start this lesson or maybe in parallel to this, please refer to the video that I have made on reference group because Sanskritization is also a kind of reference group theory and if you combine it, you will be able to understand it in a better way. So now let us begin. The term Sanskritization was used and given by M. N. Srinivas who was a disciple of G. S. Ghurie. Uh, you can find that in the lecture that I have made on G. S. Ghurie. What he meant by Sanskritization is, it is used to denote a type of process where there is a kind of mobility which is upward in nature. It is a process of cultural mobility within and outside the framework of caste system. So, two words to think of, mobility and caste. So, this Sanskritization, this concept, this is based on caste and there is an upward mobility that means the lower caste person become wants to become a part of the upper caste they adopt upper caste practices and believe to acquire high status so why do they do it in order to gain higher status in the society you can see this in the diagram that i've put what is upward mobility when we shift from lower to higher and downward mobility is just the opposite of it. So, M. N. Srinivas used this concept of Sanskritization to denote upward mobility in Indian society. Now, coming to the concept of Sanskritization. Lower caste people try to claim higher status by imitating the lifestyle of upper caste people. Now, if you have gone through the video of reference group, you will already be uh, relating to it that there is an imitation and an aspiration to become a part of the higher status. What he did was, he studied Kurgs in Karnataka. This is an important point. Please remember it. He studied Kurgs in Karnataka and found that the lower caste people adopted the customs and practices of the Brahmins, that is the higher caste people, to raise their position in the society. And they also gave up their own practices. Okay. So, they are uh, imitating the practices of higher caste people and also giving up their own practices which were considered as impure by the higher caste people. The examples which were the impure examples are drinking liquor, animal sacrifice, eating meat. So, they gave up all those. He initially termed this as Brahmanization in his book Religion and Society Among the Kurgs which was published in 1971. Important point, please remember it. But later he replaced the term with Sanskritization. Now coming to the definition, the process of mobility of lower caste by adopting vegetarianism and teetotalism that is by giving alcohol, giving up alcohol to move in the caste hierarchy in a generation or two. Okay, So this is a very long process, it might even take a generation or two to become the group that we are aspiring to become. So, this was the old definition, the initial definition which he had given when he used the term Brahmanization. Then he changed the uh, definition and the new definition was, it is a process by which a lower caste or tribe or other group changes its customs, rituals, ideology and the way of life in the direction of a high and frequently twice born caste. Twice born caste means the same high caste. This was in the same book, Social Change in Modern India, published in 1971. So, why was the definition changed? Because it is broader. He has included lower caste, tribe and other group. He has included these three groups. So, it is broader and it also included the ideology of karma, pap and punya, etc. Okay, now moving ahead. This definition was changed by because the reference groups in the term Sanskritization, it's not always Brahmins. The lower caste people can look up to other caste also and they can be known as reference groups. And today even Brahmins eat a non-vegetarian food, not all but many do. 
So it is not important that the reference group is always Brahmins. That is why the definition had to be changed and it changed to Sanskritization. While studying Sanskritization, O.M. Lynch gave a concept of elite emulation and he said that the efforts made by the lower caste to emulate the dominant caste of higher Varna is known as elite emulation. This was given by O.M. Lynch. Please read this as a fact, nothing more to get into it. Now we'll uh, go through some other points that is analysis. Now we'll analyze the concept. There is a role of local dominant class because he studied rural areas. He studies Kurgs, that is a local track. So there is a role of local dominant class that they aspire to become, that they want to become a part of the higher group. It takes time because you change everything that you've been brought up with. So you change and give up all of that and imbibe new things. So it takes a lot of time. The position changes, it's not structural. That means individual castes move, but structure remains constant. The structure will always remain constant, but individuals, they move out of it, okay, because they adopt new practices. It is an old phenomena and it is not always present now, okay. There are many people who are comfortable with what they are and it is an old phenomena. Now, these things are not so common. There is a need for ritual, economic and political power and that is why people did it then because the low caste people will look, were looked down on. So they needed some economic, political and ritual power. So they adopted the lifestyle of upper caste people. It is not important that once you become a part of the upper group, a high caste, that there is an economic development also. It is not necessary. The Sanskritization is also found in, uh, found in tribes like Bheels of West India and Gons, etc. The pattern is not always the same. There is also a give and take relationship. Okay, so we need to understand the pattern is not always the same because different groups will um, react differently with the motive. Okay, what they want. Do they want economic power, political power and they will act according to that. Now coming to the criticism of this concept, D.N. Majumdar said that this is not universal in India. Like I said, some people are comfortable with what they are and they do not aspire to become a member of the higher caste. So this is not universal. Yogendra Singh said that it fails to lead to consistent theory of social change. It did not justify to the social change and the change in definition creates confusion. He said that the new definition that M. N. Srinivas put, it creates further more confusion. Now I have a question about you, for you. Uh, what about the concept of reservation? Okay, reservation should be pro-Sanskritization, yes, but it goes against it, like it gives reservation to the backward classes, not to the higher classes. So reservation is a criticism that when we are reserving, if we go by Sanskritization, we should have reserved it for the higher caste people, but it is just the opposite. So these were some of the criticisms. Now we'll just conclude this topic. Sanskritization has a role of British rule because they were the ones who created this upper and higher caste uh, psychology in India. <coughs> Sorry. It removes gap between secular and ritual rank. Of course, it removes it because you become a part of the group that you aspire to. Material culture gave a boost, yes. When the higher caste people, they started getting material goods like cars and telephones, TV perhaps. So the uh, lower caste people might have felt bad and that is why material culture gave a boost to, to the psychology. It challenges the traditional caste system. There is an upward mobility, yes. And it serves as a reference group, of course. So please, I'm telling you again, watch this lecture with reference group. Now coming to some questions, while studying society in which state has Srinivas given the concept of Sanskritization, we did it, this is Karnataka, he studied Kurgs. Second question, name the book where Srinivas for the first time has given the concept of Sanskritization. So for the first time he has given it in the book, Religion and Society Among the Kurgs. Coming to the next question. Question number three, is Sanskritization implies change in caste structure yes this is right 
Next, who among the following were not presenting an example of Sanskritization in any sociological studies? So the answer is Shukla Brahmins of East Uttar Pradesh. They did not show any example of Sanskritization. We'll discuss this further in the next videos. I hope you understood the concept of Sanskritization. Thank you for watching the video.